So are you a difficult diner? Do you know a difficult diner? <laughs> have you been at the table with a difficult diner? Uh, have you experienced the crabbiness that goes on to waitresses and uh, servers and bartenders and chefs, even the manager? Um, so we've all had that experience <laughs> where someone's rude. And what do you do about it? So we have Sarah Ellison back on Big Ben Radio today to share tips on how to deal with difficult diners and, and don't be one yourself. <laughs> so Sarah is the author <laughs> of the book, Lessons from a Difficult Person, How to Deal with People Like Us. You can get it on her website, sarahellison.com. Go to Amazon, all those great places. Uh, Sarah is one of our Big Blend experts. You can see her articles and past interviews. Listen to them. Uh, if you go to uh, blendradioandtv.com, just go to our experts department. But for today, we're taking her article on three ways to deal with difficult diners and putting it in our park travel side of things because that's what happens. You travel, and maybe you took a detour on a road, and then you get to the restaurant, and then you're crabby because the food that you're not used to is not in that restaurant. Uh, so anyway, you can go to nationalparktraveling.com and just type in difficult diner uh, and in the search box, and you'll see it. It will also be featured in the summer-fall issue of Parks and Travel magazine. Sarah, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, we're doing good. good. We're doing good. Sitting here in Florence, Colorado, the antique yeah. capital of the world. Who knew? I had no idea I, until exactly. we got here. I know. I had so much fun looking it up after I discovered you were you were there. I thought, well, what the heck is there? So I started <laughs> looking it up, and then, then you told me. And I know. I actually There's, went to their website, but I didn't find as much as you told me about. So anyway, it was very interesting. Since my sister lives not far, I was just never heard of it before so it's nice to find it it's That's beautiful why we, there. yeah it's beautiful and this is why we do the tour um a mm -hmm. lot of smaller communities are these little hidden treasures and i think it is yeah. this is such a historic place and um it isn't been it hasn't been tur tourismized yet you know what i mean <laughs> my, tourismized <laughs> tourismized it's my new word it's a great so. word <laughs> I know exactly mind. what you mean. Yeah. Don't yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe we. It, it, maybe. I was going to say maybe you don't want it to be too tourismized, but um, no. you do want folks to discover it. I understand that. Yeah. 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 There's a balance. Yeah. It's about inviting the right people to your town. That's what we right. always talk about. Is, <laughs> and tourism is like people. if you're inviting people to come, you know, learn about your history, the nature, bird watching, the food, the you know, the antique shopping, mm -hmm. like here. You're going to bring the right people into town. So if they do move there, you know, then you've got good neighbors. So you just think Hopefully, about who you yeah. want as your neighbor. Yeah, that's how we look at it. But we don't want difficult <laughs> diners. What no. is the well, yeah. difficult diner thing? Because we've all experienced it, and, and sometimes it can be really shocking. There's somebody you, maybe you work with <laughs> that is always really nice, right. and then yeah. all of a sudden this other side comes out. Nancy said at the beginning of the show when we were talking about that, it could be a date, it could be, you know, coworker or whatever. She said it's a red flag. Yep. If it's a date. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If it's a date. <laughs> Duh. Uh, or somebody no. that you thought you wanted to spend more time with, whether it was a date or just, you know, um, someone that you just met that you think, oh, well, it might be fun to hang out with this person. I would say if they mm -hmm. send the food back more than once, big red flag. Yeah. And also the way they speak, you know, if they, if somebody clicks their fingers at a server or goes, hey, you, <gasps> you know, just that mm -hmm. kind of thing is so, so, um, well, the word respect is always used these days. But I don't, I, it's, degrading. it's disrespectful, but it's degrading. Yeah, it's very yeah. critical. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort horrible. of like, oh, I'm better than you. And actually, but, you know, we're darn lucky that they're there to serve us. Don't and they do that in don't they do that in France? They snap their fingers and go garçon. Well, <laughs> the um, the men might do that, and usually oh. it's the head waiter that does it. Oh, okay. They'll go click and call a waiter over or something. But um, mm. and a and hundred years ago, snapping your your thumbs or whatever it is, snapping. I can never do it. You know, running your thumb across your fingers and making it make a sound. Clicking. Really. Oh. I can't. I've never been really? able to do it. It's very well, frustrating. Oh, you have to do it's your middle you. finger. It only works with your middle <laughs> finger. I'm you sure don't know. Oh, well, oh. <laughs> Try it with well, your middle I'm finger. I'm trying it with the middle finger. It's working a little better. But anyway. Um, <laughs> well, I, I well, think, then. <laughs> well, 
like, because I sing in a choir, and every now and then they ask us to snap our fingers. I'm going, my fingers don't work. Yeah, um, middle finger. I okay. think it was 100, you know, 100 years ago when, when dining was an event uh, yeah. with, you know, five or six um, courses, and there was a formality oh, yeah, yeah. to it. I mean, I remember being taken to a restaurant as a child. It was, it was a Howard so. Donson, so it wasn't really classy. But my goodness, we were we were spoken to quite clearly before we went. We went with my grandmother. Mm. My mother and oh, my grandmother would take three yeah. of us girls out, and we would have to sit in our seats and have our hands in our lap and put our napkins mm-hmm. in our lap, and we were mm. not allowed to interrupt, and we couldn't, you know, lean on, you know, cool. no elbows on the table, all these things oh. that you get as you're growing up. But I remember it was a big deal, and I look at it now, and I think, Lord, it was Howard Johnson's. I mean, it was sort of the the equivalent of McDonald's, manners. But, manners. but manners were important. Mm-hmm. And I, mm. I I think the thing that that struck me as I was working on this article and talking to to people about it and what their experiences were and how they dealt with it, I think the most difficult part of having a difficult diner is um, not knowing not being able to stop it, you know, to change mm. it, and being so embarrassed for the individual mm-hmm. and for the other people and the server. And if you do know this person well, it's someone you've worked with for a long time or you've been friends with for a long time, and they suddenly do this, unless it's just the two of you, it's really hard to say, hey, what's going on with you? You're acting really uh, on um out of out of character if there were other people at the table you know like if you're introducing somebody to your your other friends and um mm-hmm. so there's other the people there that they don't your your difficult diner doesn't know very well um it's pretty hard to even have a, a, a an attempt at a conversation about what's going on um mm. And and that's that's where I go to. It's just I think it's very difficult because they're they're acting out of something that if they're not aware that they're doing it. And I you know my premise is that really difficult people don't under don't know that they're doing it. You know they really aren't aware that hmm. what they're doing is impacting other people. I, I think in the case of a difficult diner. If you know this person is like that, <laughs> your choice is not to eat with them or mm. not to go with them or or to have the conversation ahead of time and say, I will go with you as long as you, you know, Behave. don't send your food back more than once. Yeah. It's mm. too embarrassing for me and that makes me too uncomfortable. I mean, if you can be clear with someone like that, otherwise don't do it. But it's usually mm. when we're caught off guard. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of, I don't know, I've never been on a, cruise ship but i know you meet people and you make friends with people that you might never see again and my my picture is here's there's a table of what eight people and everyone's getting along and then one of them turns into this horrible person and just keeps saying well this isn't right well you didn't if you put too much of this in and why did you put i told you not to put that in there and you know see this is why we have a mute button you know, we do that to radio guests at times. No, I'm just kidding, but but that kind of thing we have done. We have done the cruise ship experience, and it's mm. not our thing. It's not our not thing our style, style and at all. But we went to the Bahamas, and um, I think we had too many Bahama mamas. But we had our hair done and these little braids and everything. We sat down, and they said you needed a dress for the captain's dinner. The and table, I felt like yeah. Hyacinth bouquet. Oh, the captain. You know, so we're like, we didn't bring dresses. You know, that's just not how we are. So we went and went shopping on the <laughs> island, and we got these almost Grecian outfits. You know, I know I know some of the listeners have heard this story, so I apologize. But I haven't they, heard it. You know, it, it's it was funny. odd looking, but we were trying to be dressy, and then we got there and saw that nobody else was dressy, but we were. And the women <sighs> at the table, because they just put you, the women – you know, they're, it's Man. the thing where they start pinching their husband's, you know, elbows and twisting their skin and like, you will not look, you won't do this. And we weren't, you know, being provocative or anything. They were nice, <laughs> but it wasn't like here, you can see it all. And that table changed. It, the dynamics changed that night. And then like, mm. sub, then it became really funny. 
they weren't rude, but they were rude. They yeah, were they like were. difficult diners to us. Because you're stuck in that table. Bed and breakfast are shark like that. Tank. It's shark well, you, tank. They turn yeah. into sharks. <laughs> well, remember that bed because, and breakfast. Because, that, they, because you were threatening, because you were sort of <laughs> sylph-like and their husbands were looking at you and they were they were annoyed. Yeah. That was, well, well, and then, then they're mean bad. to us. And then like that bre- bed and breakfast, and I'm not knocking bed and breakfast because those are really cool experiences. I remember one, one that we went to in Big Bear oh. and we're sitting around the table. And that we lived in Julia near the, or the, de- we actually oh, lived wow. in Brago at that time, known for their grapefruits and everything. And we had grapefruits and <laughs> people were asking where we were. And we said, oh, Borrego Springs and, you know, grapefruits. And they said, oh, these grapefruits. And the wo- woman sitting there <laughs> goes, I hate Borrego Springs grapefruits. <laughs> and we just looked at her like, what? See, our way of handling it, Sarah, like there's that where it's funny. You, you're you're stuck with people you don't know, and they're being difficult diners, not just to the wait staff, but to the people at the table. Oh, we yes, just start laughing, true. and that's not that's funny. funny. If we start no, laughing, no, but you two laugh a lot. I mean, you, I you use humor a lot. And, yeah, and I think I think just not responding at all when they're being rude to you or un, unkind to you, not responding at all is usually the best. <laughs> For me, it's the yeah. best um, solution. But I don't think of laughing right away. I, it isn't always my my it, first it just, choice. It, 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 oh, that's it, mine. I don't even think it just happens. Nancy rolls her eyes. Oh, I know. And, I know. That's one of the reasons and I laugh. Yeah, I roll so my eyeballs. And if we and, don't and laugh, I try then not we get to. The but they're rolling. <laughs> yeah, if we get the giggles, then you get then what? If you don't laugh, get then the what? Giggles. We get I the serious <laughs> giggles, where you'll just see our shoulders jump up and down. You'll see tears, then we cry. and occasionally we may have to run to the bathroom and go pee. Yeah, <laughs> and we, happens. you know, it sorry, like that. <laughs> this is getting sometimes TMI on this show here. You know, no, but sometimes you watch other diners and you can see it coming. And this is one thing, you know, when I read your article, I was thinking about sometimes you can see if you really observe. Like I'm so used to observing animals that now because I'm not in the wilderness as much as I used to be, I observe uh-huh. people. You can uh-huh. see who is going to be mean by how they watch, the, how they re- read through the menu. You can <gasps> see them. That first of all, uh-huh. they frown. They frown and they go down the list of things. Then they tap, tap, tap on the menu like, this can't be all you got. Tap, tap, tap. When they tap on the menu, you know it's coming. And then you get set up for it and you can watch it. And it's really fun. It's like going to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the wait staff, for sure. For for the people serving, it sucks. You know. No. Yeah. Well, that's extra. sort of where I was coming from. Was that it's the person. My my only experience was uh, my only big experience was when I was in college. Uh, I, it, it was like a five hour drive from my home to my college, and so um, our parents would carpool. And so a bunch of us would get driven one way by one parent, and then at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, coming home would be a different parent would come and get us. And, and so I was in the car uh, traveling with people I didn't really know, mm. although their daughter was on my floor. You know, I knew her, and we lived near each other. Um, mm. Anyway, long story short, the mother picked at her daughter from the minute she got in the car. Uh-oh. And, you know, her hair, her fingernails, her, they had a terrible relationship. And I don't think we knew that or we would have tried to find a different route. But mm. it, it, what I experienced in the, again, it was it was not a fancy restaurant. It was the kind of place where you would just get hamburgers and fries or a BLT or something. You wouldn't, you wouldn't try to get, you know, a, a gourmet meal. And this woman sent things back twice. And oh, she wow. was, you know, snippy and, and rude. And, and there we were. We were, what, 18, 19 years old, and she was in her 30s, obviously, or f- close to 40. And and the the parent of one of our friends, it was horrible. And, <laughs> every, you know, when I think about a difficult diner, that's what I had in my head. But mm. I think having people who are rude to you while you're dining, it's a little easier. You can get up and leave. Yeah. I mean, you have a exactly. cho- you can vote with your feet. Whereas mm-hmm. when they're when you're at some kind of, I think I think uh, it's not happened to me, but people related it to me that it had happened to them going to 
um, you know, meeting for lunch with other professionals in your field, mm -hmm. and you sort of meet once a month or every six weeks to just check mm -hmm. in, and that one of the women is just nasty. <laughs> And, yeah. <laughs> and it's a, it was a caring field. It's a field that um, warm, tender people usually are drawn to. So it's it's tough anyway that she's in the field. <laughs> but they mm. they haven't been able to figure out how to not include her in their meals. And so my friend said, uh, was one of the ones who suggested using humor to sort of mm. joke along and say, now, okay, I've been dreaming up ways to make your life difficult, ha, 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 to the, to the mm. server after having experienced the woman who was was difficult. Yeah. Um but I mean I, but I think that's tough cuz you you can't really you don't want to vote with your feet there. Um and mm. and say, "Well, I'm sorry, you're you're this is too much. I can't take it and I'm leaving." And you know, you're just too well, rude for me, you know. You could you could do something like say to the server, um I'm sorry, my friend's yeah, she's trying out for a play where she's going to be the worst person to go dine with, and so she's just trying her lines out on you. Oh my God! Well, <laughs> I, the, the people I know—I mean, I love it. It's a great idea. But you really, you really need to be. I would think you would want to um, know the person well before mm. doing that, just because it's mm. well. You know, I might have done that 20 years ago, but I think it's kind of mean. Well, I think I would do something like, oh, sounds like you're having a tough day today. Exactly. Just, That's can I have I'm another doing. table? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. I would Just, no, you know, I think it it depends. It depends on the your level of, can, you know, it. I mean, if it was Nancy and I, one of us would just, if mm. either one of us behaved like that, which we don't ever to wait staff. Ever. 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 Um, even if they're bad i mean some people are really bad at their jobs they're rude then yeah. you can bonus yeah. your tip money you can sit there right. and not give them a tip you can say hey this is you know you're not being nice or whatever i mean we do this for a living we go from restaurant to restaurant go we're not critics um but we write about the experience and you know if mm -hmm. it's negative we just don't write about it we don't we see that's where we come from but if one of us was rude then the other one would just turn and say, "Stop it right now!" Like, stop yeah. it being mean. Oh you yeah. Know, we'd be right in our in our face with each other that way. Um, and we actually did have an experience not too long ago with. Um, we were out at a <laughs> restaurant, and when we walked in, we we're trying to tell them what we're doing. Blah blah blah. Um, nobody listened. Two <laughs> two of the staff did not listen. Anyway, the bill comes. The third person comes to us. This guy who just kind of swooped in and says to us, oh, are you guys having a quiet romantic date, just the two of you? Yeah. That's that what he said funny. to us. And so Seriously. I just looked at him, no, I'm here to yeah. write about you. And I almost <laughs> said, idiot. I didn't. But then I, we, we, I talked to the manager about what we're doing. And Nancy just busts out and says, I want you to know, could you mind delivering a message that this is my daughter I don't date my daughter, and I'm like, and I'm not my mother's age. I'm like, hello, that's rude. That was no. Out of he line. needed to be. He needed to be told that that, what that yeah. was, rude. was. Well, it's it's, it's, it's funny stupid, now, though. Is what it's it really is. funny. It's funny. It's funny, but it's not. But it it's really awkward, and um, the assumptions that he made were so wrong. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he. Why don't even come to the table because you, the, you didn't do anything for anybody. I don't even know didn't why. Didn't enhance the meal, that's for sure. Well, he maybe he was the manager or something, or or yeah, I think he was part the of bartender. his job. Oh, was think, he? Well, yeah, I think he was the bartender. I don't know. Probably because you guys were laughing and giggling and having such a good time. He figured it. It couldn't be just be a mom and her daughter. My God, it they was never weird. Do things like that. Then Nancy's like, "I'm your sugar mama." <laughs> <laughs> you know, because then oh we get silly God. when something like that happens. You get silly. It's funny. I wanted, but I wanted to go back to your article, and I think there are ways to do it with humor. There's ways to talk calmly and say, "Hey, that's not too appreciated," or whatever. We were really nice to them. We're still doing a really good feature because the food was really some of the best the mac and cheese I've excellent. had in, ever. Um, so it was oh, good. Okay. So you have to balance it out, but. 
Um, the one part you said is the serenity prayer, and I got the giggles as soon as I read that because all I could see was George Costanza's father and sign Serenity now. Serenity now. Serenity now. <laughs> Have you seen that episode of Seinfeld where he runs around like I, a lunatic? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I haven't. But it sounds like I'm, fun. I'm gonna mm. fi- I'm gonna find it and send it to you. It's got to be on YouTube somewhere. He just he has his yeah. head, you know, just totally. Serenity now, serenity now, everything's going crazy. You can yeah. do that in a restaurant. Yeah. Usually, in a, when you need to do the serenity prayer, um, it's usually because you're at that point of screaming serenity now in your head. Exactly. Um, and and often, at least for me, it's hard to remember to do to do it. So I offered mm. it as a as an option. I think that the the whole point of it is to to remember that. Uh, we're not in charge of other people, and we can't change mm. them. We can invite them to, you know, cool their jets, I guess, is the best way to mm. say it, or um, one way to say it, to say, boy, are you having a bad day? This, what what I like to, to pre- preface is that this is so unlike you. This is not the way mm. I usually experience you. What's going on? If you can do that, um, <laughs> I... <laughs> I mean, are if, you if you're comfortable like doing you that, or <laughs> I'm sorry, you could say, "Are you always like this when you eat out?" <laughs> oh God! Well, if you really want to make an enemy, I mean, my, you're just you're just trying to tease. I, here I am trying to give real advice. I know, but that was because silly. it's funny. I think the whole the whole subject is funny because it, you know. How could you uh, – okay, so would you never go out and eat with that person again or you have to give them rules um, before you go out to eat with them again? I mean, it just seems so like there's it's a gonna level It's going to go into in, some other part of their life too. You could. Yeah, they're doing you it. Could. It's, there's a level of give them immaturity. It's, mm-hmm. it's like immaturity. There's a level of immaturity in that person who acts that way. You could, yes, and whoever it is is mm-hmm. – uh, is is at the end of whatever rope they're on, and mm-hmm. so they're taking it out on the server, or, mm-hmm. or you know, using the criticism of something that because they can't change something else in their life because whatever else is going on for them is mm-hmm. so negative. That's my right. guess. That's, mm-hmm. that's so. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then there were you know there are people who are just kind of like that and we know they're yeah. like that and I think yeah. I I would say um, something to the effect of I'd love to go out and have a meal with you but I got a friend who's always late she's always late and so I always say I, I will wait 15 minutes for you so if you say oh. you're going to be there at 11 and you're not there at 11 15 if you haven't texted me I will leave and I don't like doing that but it really pisses me off when you're late all the time and so (laughs) you know one of the things that she laughs and says well I'll set my you know I'll put it on my calendar for earlier and so she's a little better when she does that so it's the kind of thing when you invite her to dinner you invite her for six o'clock because Mm -hmm. you want her there at seven because she'll walk in at seven wow Wow. weird yeah that's not fair to the restaurant either they want to move tables man you know, there's there's a there's a thing. But you know, there was once um we went to Mexico. Well, you know, we had lived in Mexico. We we had come back to California and everything at this time. And we went to Tijuana with a friend of ours and his daughter. His daughter was <laughs> older than me, and I was in my early twenties, and she was about thirty. We Aww. go. We toured this beautiful cathedral. It was just a really nice day. We go into this restaurant overlooking like the plaza area. Really nice. And and they were cool because the Maracha band came in and they like, hey, you know, we we're talking because at that point we were in a band and everything. And they're like, here, mm-hmm. you can play. And I was like, I felt weird playing their guitar and showing what we do and whatever. But it was a really cool thing. Well, this girl d- decides to take her shoes off and put her feet up <laughs> on the back of a chair. Okay. Because it was very relaxed. It was an open outdoor setting. But Oh, you wow. don't put your feet up on a chair at the back of the chair. So she's bizarre. basically her legs are up on um, and up and the and the feet. These beautiful wooden chairs at the top of the chair. Okay, <laughs> and so we're looking at her legs. Were not Betty Grable. Yeah, you know, no. 
No, and I'm like, what? Is, what are you doing? This is rude. I don't want to. I don't want to smell your toes. I don't want that. <laughs> then she goes. She, was she looks at the back at the of the room. She decides. She was at the back of the gonna, room. It was terrible. She decides she's going to go downstairs to the taco truck and bring the tacos <laughs> up because she wants that menu instead of what's in the restaurant. So that I can't remember which one of us, but we basically said, you know. You are going to be very offensive to their culture. It is rude. And if it's you're going to do that, please do not come back to our table. We are not yeah. part oh, of your so party. You, oh, yeah, you were originally it. part of your party? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and was that, she like, like a, someone you knew? Like a friend? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no, not, oh, my. no. This was the first time we met his daughter, right? And he oh. and he's like, mm-hmm. what? Is, she's just going to get some food. What's the big deal? We're like, okay, well, you you suck too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, they needed that, education. That's, and that's all we did. We're like, on. this is rude to okay. this country, not only in the restaurant, but it is rude to it's us. A, it is rude to the it's rude rest of the any diners. country. And you don't anybody, buy food no matter where off you are. the street and bring it into okay. a restaurant. You guys are both talking over each other. Okay, here's sorry. A, here's, where I, here's where I go with this. Is, that is, and, and I, I would agree with you that you'd say, if, you, if you're going to go do that, then get the tacos and sit outside and eat them there. I mean, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, it's not... If you're here, you eat what's here. If you're there, you eat what's there. Right. And her son, and and the, the other, her father or whoever said, "Well, what's the big deal?" It's a it's a lack of education. And see, I find calling them rude, it, all it does is get in the way. If you say, "Well, that what you're doing is rude," you're just going to piss the person off. Oh yeah. Whereas for if sure. you say, "You know, um, what you're doing it will be offensive to their culture," I think that was a wonderful. Um, a wonderful way of saying it that this is uh, this is their the way they uh, entertain. Mm. This is the way they cook. And um, if you go and get food somewhere else, you're it's kind of disrespectful. And then try desperately to find an example from our culture mm. that you could use to explain it. That's, but that's what could, I'm saying. You could do yeah. that in this country. What, saying, what you're doing is just rude. Now, if it's yeah. between the two of you, that's mm. different. But if it's people you don't know, they're going to be – they're not going to listen. They won't hear you. Their reaction will be, who do you think you are telling you? It's, blah, 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 blah. it's rude in any culture. I'm I mean, not going to disagree just, with you. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. I'm yeah. just saying calling it that, naming it that, saying it to someone, that just makes them more difficult. Right. No, so, I think you're right. Well, I think we could say this is – this is awkward, you know, to be in a restaurant and order food here while you bring in food from somewhere else. Somehow, I feel like somebody's going to be offended. Mm. Oh, I think that's, that's a nice way. Mm. I think I think um, we were talking over each other, and I was trying to mm. say we actually said it is rude to them. I, I said this is rude to them. This, you know, this restaurant, it, they will take this as a rude thing. That's what I was right. meaning. It wasn't like, you're rude. We didn't go like, you're rude. That, because that doesn't, that oh. just gets everyone's back up. No, we didn't do that. But you're right. That's a, that's an initial thing that a lot of people will do. And I've probably done it. I could guarantee in my life that, they, hey, that's rude. You're rude. <laughs> it's about how you put it and do it. You know, especially being younger, you're going to go, you know, you, you're rude. You know, that's, it's mean. But the, well, what you're doing really, is rude. It, yeah, it was a really, I'll never forget that day. And I thought, God, mm, you know, that but was it, it is an education. There is a, um, yeah, it's, it's when you go up well, to inter- eat, you go ahead. I was going to say what's interesting is that I'm a barefoot person. And so I, mm. <laughs> I yeah, take my too. shoes off in restaurants me a too. lot. But I don't necessarily put my feet up, um, uh, in you know, on the back of somebody else's chair or something. No, I, that's. Gross. When you were talking about it, though, it made me remember a trip when I was flying to California and from Cincinnati to California. It's a fairly long flight, and my legs were just aching. And I put them up. I was in the front row, you know, where you've got that mm-hmm. barrier, you know, like a wall in front of you. What I forgot mm-hmm. what they call that, but anyway, um, <laughs> and I had taken my shoes off, and so I just put my legs up. You know, I was younger and more flexible and I just put my legs up so they were you know my feet were above my head well the woman next to me was so offended oh and yeah she really lit into me and she was someone wow. I've been talking to about professional things back at uh, in Cincinnati and I was like well, whoops I guess I lost any any in on that one um whoa so I <laughs> I I put my legs back down but I was quite annoyed because 
it's it's really good for your legs to not always have the gravity uh. pulling on them. <laughs> And I don't know if I had left my shoes on, whether it wouldn't have offended her so much, but no, I had to think of that one. Yeah, yeah, it would have it w- still offended her. It's because not was, ladylike. But, no, but, no, but nobody can see anything. I had trousers <laughs> on. It wasn't like I was, you know, in a shirt it's or something. It's not done. <laughs> it's, I can oh. hear my grandmother. I can hear my grandmother right now. It is not done. <laughs> yes, it's just not oh. done. But you know, no, no, you got it's hyacinth bouquet from Are You Being Served. It is, yeah. She would have, she would have art. But I think it is, it is about it's funny where you are, and you know. But I, I think there's just the, the being rude is being rude, and when people look down on servers and bartenders and rude. chefs, mm-hmm. um, they work really, really hard, and. There is at some point it was like if you're doing that you're not you're not smart or something you know it's like and there's that edge that people oh. have and that's yeah. what I always pick up is that people look at oh you're just a waitress well actually there's a talent to being a good waitress oh, or server sure. excuse me uh, I, whatever mm. the correct term is I mean that um, yeah. there it is really <laughs> difficult there's an art to it there's a learning how to have things you move things on time like. You know, on radio shows, right. we have to move things at a specific time, and it's the same thing. It's like you've got to get the food out, make the customer happy, multitask. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most the biggest multitasking jobs you can have or career that you can have. And there's people that have been, they're like famous waitresses, famous bartenders yeah. in, in life. Um, and you, you go up through the ranks. Some, you know, everybody's different in what they do. But, I've you know, I've, I've worked in the food industry for a number of years, and – it's a very lively, fun, it's a fun industry, but it is really, really hard. harder than what people think. And sometimes yeah. you as an individual going to work, you're going to have a bad day. It could be one of those. I remember when my first times, you know, I spilled a fish on some guy's lap, you know, it was like, <laughs> oopsie, but I was nice. I was like, I'm so, oh, what can I do? You know, and they ended up leaving me a really big tip because of how I handled it. You know, and they it's felt like, sorry and for was, you. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky that it was them and not one of those snap your fingers people because yeah. somebody could be out of a job <laughs> over a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, yeah. but it's those people are the same people of the, like the nasty bosses, you know, and mm-hmm. that's what they're trying to do mm-hmm. is boss people around. And that's, that's uncalled for. It's not, you don't have that position and the customer is not always right. And that's why restaurants and bars put up signs everywhere. We have the right to refuse service, especially yeah. drunk yeah. I, customers. My reaction is if someone is, is complaining, you know, being unpleasant about um, something to do with the services or, or acting as if uh, a server is less than, my reaction is you never waited tables. I mean, I, I waited tables three summers when I was in college. I mm. put myself through graduate school as a waitress. Um, my dad paid for my tuition, but I had to pay all the rest. And um, the summer of of being a server, uh, so I mean, and I was not terribly skillful at it, but I really appreciate them when they are. And it occurred to me, I I haven't talked to my friend about this lately, but um, a woman that I go to have lunch with, oh, I don't know, once a month, once every six weeks. Uh, when we first started going to this one place, we had a young server who said or did something that was um, really awkward. And I said something to her. My friend complimented me. I said something like, um, you know, do you know that when you use that term or when you um, ask that, it it stops the your customer thinking they get all confused i forget what i said but she mm-hmm. said oh that was so nice because it was an educational thing and of course we we also tipped her really well i always i way over tip mm-hmm. period all the yeah, time yeah me too because well you know my experience was mm-hmm. <laughs> little old ladies were horrible tippers and i always like to oh, make yes. that stereotype. <laughs> there's your pennies <laughs> They do. They, they always left the pennies. Here's your ten cents. And, it, and that's hair. an insult at that point. It's a blue hair. Well, you know, maybe that's all the money they've got. But I try to this break that true. stereotype by being the by being the little old lady who leaves the good tips. So, anyway. so you're not a little old lady. 
<laughs> oh, I am, actually. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I don't sound like one, but I really am. <laughs> but, oh, okay, funny. but you're not from Pasadena. <laughs> like, that's that's true. lady from Pasadena. <laughs> Dina. Oh, that's no. right. Well, she was kind of a hot ticket, so I wouldn't mind. Yeah, she was. A little yeah, she from was. Pasadena. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but it's, yeah, it's that's interesting because it's true. You know, I remember waitressing, and if and if they were seniors, they would give you here's your ten cents, and yeah, you know, right. and then you realize that, but you're right. Maybe that's all they had, and and I have to look at it that way. But but then but you see maybe, them drive off in a big fancy car, so you know, well. But sometimes, you know, sometimes that's what they're doing—the same thing they've done for forty years or exactly. fifty years—and they're not—they're yeah. not updating their cells. They need to plug in an update. In. Yeah, they have yeah. to update. But I want to say Lisa and I are so allergic to seafood and shellfish, and whenever and ah. we eat out a lot, especially now. One of the things that I think is really funny. Um, when we tell a waitress we're allergic to seafood and shellfish, not just like the, there's a lot of people who are allergic to shellfish. Not very many people are allergic to fish. There's a difference. And so you can uh-huh. see this, this kind of non understanding, confused uh-huh. look on the, on the server's face when you say we're allergic to fish and shellfish. And they're kind of like, well, what's the difference? And you're like, there is a difference. It makes you nervous. We have learned we don't go anywhere near steakhouses that um, the menu is more seafood than steak because we already know it's dangerous. So we don't do it because of that look. And sometimes, you know, when you get into um, sending your food back, it could be just because you get that smell and you're like, not, not eating it. Yeah. Because well, but see, that's the first time. It's the yeah. second or third time that I think is, is. Mm-hmm. But I have a, a one of the women that I go to dinner with once a month uh, can't have dairy. Period. No, mm. no butter, okay. no milk, no, no oh, buttermilk, no, none of that. Stuff. Yeah, she's. <laughs> she, it, it does kind of ruin the meal for her, but yeah. um. She she's very specific and she asks every time about and and how do you cook it and do you use and and the guy the good restaurants and we've pretty much learned where they are they always go mm. and check they go and ask yeah. the mm-hmm. chef and come mm. back and say yes or no because mm. and if they don't she asks them to she'll say would oh. you please go ask the chef you mm. know and and that's the truth everyone's got like yeah. sensitivities yeah. now. Food sensitivities or different diets, like you know, when I went vegan, it was like the hardest thing. And then you, then the restaurant would look down on you, like it was. Then you don't want to be there, and it's like that weird thing. But it's changed now that because look. restaurants have had to realize, you know, you're gonna if you want customers, you're gonna have to adopt these accommodate. things. Accommodate if yeah, you're gonna or have to not. accommodate up, their, their yeah. Or not, it's up to you, you know what I mean, as a restaurant owner, this or that, but most have learned. The other day when we were in Greeley, Colorado, oh gosh, uh-huh. such a beautiful downtown, and this uh, mm. gentleman, Brian, and his wife had opened up Luna's Tequila and Tacos, and he's got that a number cool. of restaurants, and we met with him and his wife, and, and you know, had Amy from the chamber, were all, he was sharing all these different taco experiences, and trying to explain what they do. It's all farm to table. Sweetest, sweetest uh, couple. And awesome. he went to order and we're like, oh, you need to know this. And he, and then there was one thing he really wanted us to try and it had almonds in the crema, uh, almond crema because it's all Mexican, you know. And um, he turned to the server, he goes, alert, this, 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 this. And they had like their own little code of not, nothing on this table gets touched by any of that. Like, it, and and really... It was very um, nice to hear that that they already had a way of communicating that without making you feel horrible or Bad. stupid. Or if you know, because I always take the vegetarian things. I'm really vegetarian, vegan as much as I can. Um, but they will go into the, just the way you did it was really nice, and you felt like okay, okay, now I can I can dig in. And you know, we ate we ate the carne asada and all that. It was really really good food mm, and just yummy. in that five that little split second of how he communicated to the server and how nice he was to his servers that is the other part they were really nice to their employees mm. you felt more relaxed 
and you'd probably have a second margarita and more food. You know, I'm just saying because you felt relaxed and comfortable. Well, so I think that's a part of it. And when you go out to dinner with people, you want to have fun with them, have a conversation, be nice. When someone's rude, you break that whole reason of why you're going out together. Things happen that do go wrong in a restaurant. You just kind of, hey, well, this happened. You have a communication. And when you're rude, you just, I, I like the one thing where you go in and you talk to him afterwards on your way out and say, I don't know what his problem or her problem was, but, you know, at least tip them more or say you're a good part of it and go take, go write good reviews on social media. Because the same nasty diner, the difficult diner does the same nasty thing to us on social media to restaurants. Mm. It's the same person. Mm-hmm. Mm. Why do you find I was that thinking, I was reflecting while you were talking um, about a time that I was, uh, I went to a restaurant by myself. I had a book. It was, you know, supper. Uh, I was traveling. And um, I ordered my meal, and she brought my meal. And I had asked for something like coffee at the end of my meal. And I waited 20 minutes after Ooh. I was finished. I'd moved the well, I was reading a book, so well, what the heck? I was all right. Mm. But um, and then um, finally, I got up and I went to the whatever the the, mm. the manager and said, "I'd like my bill." And the woman came. They went and found her, and, and she said, "Well, didn't you want coffee?" I said, "Well, yes, I wanted coffee at the end of my meal, but my the end of my meal was 20 minutes ago." And I, and kind of in that tone, mm. and she acted like I was being a bitch, and I turned to. When she went off to write up my check, and I turned her to uh, her boss and said, you know, um, I think I was pretty polite, and I asked for something at the end of my meal, and I don't think she was paying attention. Not mm. a good night for her. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. That's, she's not getting a good tip from me, baby. And yeah, uh, wow. he agreed with me. He he gave me a coupon to get a free meal the next time I came into that chain, whatever it was. And I thought, well, yeah. My reaction was, I don't, I don't think I'll be in your chain again, but you can give me a coupon if you want. Mm. Yeah, I, you just have to have that conversation, was, you know. Well, if you don't communicate. Just, I just, yeah, I just thought, I thought, it wasn't as if she was rushing. You know, there weren't thousands of people on her station. That's the other. Mm. You know, once you once you've been a waitress, <laughs> excuse me, a server, um, you you can kind of gauge. Like there are times when someone says, "I'm sorry, I'm taking so long." I say, "Believe me, I've been in your shoes, and you're doing great." You know, because sometimes mm. they're just rushed off their feet. Right. Mm. It's like when someone's new too, or that yeah, if they say, "Hey, we've got oh, a, like a crazy crowd," or "I'm new," or "This is going on." If if people communicate, that's the thing. It's communication. I think that's yeah. what yeah. you know. All of our conversations with you, it's really about how do we communicate, especially when you're frustrated or the people around you are frustrated. You know, because mm-hmm. one yeah. one frustration ripples out to Everybody. other frustrations. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and how do you balance <laughs> it's that? Catching. It's catching. It's, it, it is. It's it's interesting though. I'm I'm sitting here. I hadn't thought of these until we got into this conversation. But when I was back in my less than pleasant days, I remember going to dinner with some very close friends, uh, another couple, and um, something my husband had done had just annoyed me a lot. <laughs> And he was telling our friends about it, like he was really proud of it. And I had already <laughs> sort of told him that I thought it was a really bad thing, and I'm not going to go into what it was. Um, but it was a gift that he had given me <laughs> that he thought was really wonderful, and I didn't think it was wonderful at all. It <laughs> was he for for you know a Mother's Day. Here we we appreciate your mothering so much. He gave me a new um, handheld vacuum cleaner. <laughs> okay, on Easter I got a volleyball. <laughs> well, do you like to play volleyball? Well, I didn't like to vacuum, and I thought I said this, I hadn't really this thought means, about it. <laughs> this, I mean, to me, a vacuum cleaner is a you, you, something that's you, rude. you utilize to clean the house. It doesn't yeah, much say much mean. about me. That is mean. I, that's no, mean. Well, no. He and my son <laughs> had gotten together. They thought it was a great gift, and I was like, Are you kidding? No, <laughs> really, that's anyway, wrong. Anyway, I so I kind of sounded <laughs> off during the meal, though. Now that I remember it, I kind of 
went off and uh so it probably ruined the meal. <laughs> oh well. Too. It was a long time ago, but <laughs> Yeah, but that's sometimes a Yeah, that's a good point because when you get together with friends, like you're gonna okay, so you it's the same thing as when you go to work, right? You need to take that baggage and, and stuff it in the back seat. You're going to work. Yeah. But if you go to dinner with your friends the next thing you're gonna bring the baggage into the dinner mm. and that's that's wrong. That's that's well, that's not yeah. a, that's and not I think fair. I, the, the the one saving grace was I mean I was pretty angry, so I was <laughs> you know, talking about women's rights and that kind of stuff. My the wife of the other couple did did acknowledge that it wasn't exactly a tender mm-hmm. romantic kind of gee mom we love you kind of gift um and so <laughs> like so hey mom please that made car. me feel a little better <laughs> i think she was trying to get me to calm down so i it probably worked but i hadn't i completely forgotten that experience <laughs> i must have been really hard to live with that's all i can think of oh, that's dear. funny it's funny, it's funny well, that i mean because sometimes I remember. you know sometimes you, when you are um like when you have to buy a gift, like buying gifts for people in an office oh, is really yeah. annoying and frustrating and difficult because really what do you get them? You know, it's like, uh, I, that to me is one of the hardest things to do is buy a gift for somebody that you really kind of know but not really in the office. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's hard. Office gifts. Are t- t- yeah. seems like what, what we often do now um, is gift cards, mm-hmm. you know. We know where they like to shop. And, oh, my goodness. They did that for me once in a professional organization that I was part of. They gave me a, a gift card for a particular store that I really liked but was not was a little more expensive mm. than I usually yeah. wanted to spend. And they had a lotion there that I just loved. And I had mentioned it when I was teaching a class. I don't know how we got onto that subject, but we did. Mm. And I said, well, my favorite one, and people were talking about their favorite ones, so then when it came time at the end of our, our class experience and professionally, they, we were all thanking each other. They gave me a gift card for this shop. It was wonderful. Awesome. You know, See, well, that's, my yeah. husband, my yeah. husband had done that. would have been really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's about thought. Not, it, yeah, it, it, it's interesting because I've had, I remember um, my, my, uh, the, the, the other person that helped me come into the life <laughs> give me a send me a oh. gift of a of a, a a watch. He sent me a gift Ooh. of a watch, and he oh sent it gosh. overseas. And Nancy that said, well, "If you're going to send a watch, you need to pack it in popcorn." He sent it in buttered <laughs> popcorn. He put the watch in the buttered popcorn and sent it. Oh, how funny! I know. So, did it work? <laughs> no, no. Of course not. No, don't start me. No, he, he had a way of dumping everyone with Amway gifts. Yeah, like you know. Oh, that was the other thing, Amway. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, well, funny. You know. Yeah. It's just a whole Here's other life. Cleaner for your for your birthday. Here's some carpet cleaner. <laughs> I know, and a vacuum for Sarah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's really funny. It's really funny. But hey, well, everyone, I think at the end of the, the day, vacuum. go ahead. I was gonna say, I think the vacuum was an honest mistake. I mean, they <laughs> they 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 knew that I wanted to have one that you could hold, you know, rather than yeah. the big long long. St- I had one that stood up, yeah, and, and that yeah, I had yeah. been talking about getting one that um was yeah. So that's you know, kind of uh, so yeah. they knew that I was talking about it, but I it still felt like a industrial <laughs> sort of. You belong, you belong cleaning the house, Sarah. That's what it felt. Like. <laughs> and I hated house cleaning. I still hate. House <laughs> well, who likes it? You know. Well, some I don't. people do. I have friends who who you know work as house cleaners and they love it. They do it because they love cleaning houses. And I just well, good uh, power to them. I have a Man. woman helping me right now who is um, helping me downsize and sort through things in my office and in my. My bedroom and my closet and my basement, and she loves it. It's like she's she said it's partially um, it's not ADD. It's got something with initials, um, hmm. OCD I think. Where oh. she give her a drawer full of stuff and she loves to sort it. She just 
and and it's <laughs> so interesting because I it would just make me want to throw up to do something like that, <laughs> and yet she it just turns her on. So some people love hey. to clean house. Hmm. Right on. Yeah. I'm not Sarah, one of them. We've we've got to run. I want to I want to thank you for oh, joining dear. us. It's always so pleasure. We I know we got in there, man. We 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 played cleaning. We played gifts. We talked about <laughs> diners and all kinds. We got we got everything going on. We can solve the world's problems when Sarah comes on. Everyone yeah. again. The book by Sarah Ellison is Lessons from a Difficult Person: How to Deal with People Like Us. You can get it on Amazon, but go to her website, sarahellison.com. You also see her articles on Blend Radio and TV.com. And also nationalparktraveling.com, especially this article about difficult diners. Just type in difficult diners or type in Sarah. You'll find her articles there in the search box. But Sarah, here's your, your, your song today is Adobe Cafe. Because no one can be mad in the Adobe Cafe. Love can happen. Right. Cozy mm-hmm. relationships. Thanks. Yeah, I'm this is from Wally, Wally Lauder. And he's based out in Tucson. And we, you know, we just got to reach out and have our Tucson fun. But Wally's got new albums out. He'll be back on the cool. show real soon. We're working on dates. Oh, Carson's good. doing all these house concerts everywhere and, and shows. And, good. But we're going to get him on the show soon. So here it is, Adobe Cafe. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks, You're Sarah. welcome. It was fun. I had a good time. Yeah, I, good. You take care. It's good. We're going to be talking about this for the rest of the day now. You know that, I right? Know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you later. Here it is, Adobe Cafe. <laughs> Bye-bye. In an adobe cafe On the dusty side of town Is a dark-haired girl With eyes of brown He watches the way The way she moves around Soft as a butterfly Barely touching the ground Just a cup of coffee Just a stop along the road He's falling in love With someone he doesn't even know He wonders about her as her soft hips sway As she runs her hand through the long dark hair In a casual way Does she have a man? Does she have a kid? Where does she go when she goes home? He wonders where she Just a cup of coffee Just a stop along the road He's falling in love With someone he doesn't even know Cafes, towns and roads So the story goes Another Just a 
stoppers on the road. He's falling in love. 